Hello and welcome to the Echo Chamber Podcast. My name is Tony Groves and today we're talking autonomy. As always, I'm joined by my co-host and provided Trump doesn't start World War III, the upcoming star of the TV3 reality show, Martin's Moans. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like I go on Diddy Rock TV. Well, you may say you won't, but I see the DM. I see the DM, Mark. It's all about the money. More importantly, we're delighted to be joined in the Tour de Shack by Chair of the Cork Together for Yes campaign, activist, author, and editor of the book Autonomy, Cathy Darcy. Cathy, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks very much for having me. It's great to be here. You no, know, um, we were we were just downstairs uh, having, a, having a quick chat and. Cathy, you're you're actually from across the across the river from where my wife is, and uh, but but you but you're but you're living in you're living in a, in, in on the Black Rock Road and in and out of Cork. So how did you get all the way into Dublin, and what brought you here? I don't know. It was someone tricked me. I just I fell asleep and I woke up here. I'm very angry. Um, no, I'm up here to launch autonomy. So we had the Dublin launch of autonomy last night in books upstairs. Yeah, and uh, it went incredibly well. Uh, the turnout was way bigger than I expected. The book sold out in minutes. Um, so I'm, I'm bringing more books up to books upstairs for people to buy them. And, uh, yeah, it was just really, really positive night. So I feel very, I feel very good. Can't wait to get back to Cork, obviously. Yeah, yeah, no, I can't, can't like visa and everything must be hard to it get. It was very, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but no, Martin, I know you went along. And, and you're underestimating the book sold out in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. In 10 minutes, the book sold out. The crowd was massive. Mm. Um, some great faces there that were were used. To, Tara was there. Hi, Tara. Our pod mother. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Tara. So you know, it was a lovely night. It was actually a lovely night. And a lot of people turned up to it. So it yeah. seems to be a great push behind this. It does. Yeah, it and does. And you're a one woman army on this. <laughs> you are. You are everywhere and anywhere on this. Well, I have my army of sisters now. You know, the book is kind of like a little more a portable army that you can carry with you. Um, But yeah, so I'm trying to launch it in as many places as possible because uh, when you buy the book at a launch, um, you buy it at cost price for five euros and then you're invited to make a donation to the Together for Yes campaign and uh, those donations will go directly to the campaign. So the more launches we have, the more money we can raise, the more people we can meet to talk about the campaign. Um, So we're launching it all over the country, basically. So just uh, sorry, Martin, but on the Together for Yes, we know this the huge success that it was this week in terms of fund. Well, they started on the morning and said, can we raise 50,000 euro? That was done in a matter of hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, We've now gone over half a million in, in, in monies raised. Myself and Martin had a conversation off air where we said, even though I'm confident that this is going to pass and that's just my, I'm putting it out there, but... At the same time, when it passes, what what comes into force will be that the doll has to legislate for what happens. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't stop there. So so even though together for a yes is a movement that people say, well, what are you going to do? And these were this was something that will have to be um, will will evolve much in the same way as Me Too became Times Up. Yes, this needs to you know these things need to evolve. But if we can focus on the book, the book is a collection of stories. And I, I know Martin, you were talking again about it, and I'm, I'm going to step out now. But like, you could you just tell us what was kind of what most affected you most in, in, in as the editor and collating these. Yeah, I could talk for a long time about the experience. So I just put out an open call. I didn't know what would happen. Mm. I didn't know if anyone would be interested. And then there was this overwhelming response. And the response came from so many different kinds of people, like people from all different walks of life, all different experiences, all different ages, all different backgrounds. And what also happened was nearly everyone who sent me something sent me a secret, like their own story. So we had all these kind of sharing moments, yeah. which was incredibly moving. And so to meet these people then at launches and to have that sharing, it, it's just all been an incredibly moving process. Even people reviewing the book have to email me and be like, their minds are blown. They're very moved. They want to share their own stories. And yeah. so I feel like it's going to start to kind of, the more people share their stories, the more people are able to share their stories. Yeah, that's that's a terrific outlet. And it's so it's so positive, especially when you have that. It's almost easier to tell some of those stories, I'd, I'd imagine, in, in an, an anonymity where you can just yeah. put it out there and, and not feel judged. Yeah. Um, because I know when we spoke to Tara, she spoke about, you know, um, going to Amsterdam and yeah. you putting it on a credit card, being lucky enough to be able to put it on a credit mm-hmm. card. And the shame of this, and then born of that is her um, 
is 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 her is her play or her, her one man show or as I gotta say but she, <laughs> she's doing it as you know I'm a spy I'm you know she's putting the, the fantasy part yes. of it to 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 deflect from the shame yeah so those people who told you their stories that's very uh, that's it's great cathartic. yes how see did, how I knew the words you, you how, did how did you choose which ones to put in I mean that must have been a mammoth task actually I I put in nearly everything I received you know I, well like everyone's story is relevant. I feel like, and I didn't want to impose my own agenda or um, sanitize anything. I wanted the, you know, the complexity, the ambiguities, the the second thoughts, uh, all of those things, the complications, because it's it's not a straightforward thing. And I mm-hmm. suppose, you know, maybe people on the other side are kind of pretending like it's this very straightforward thing that uh, women do and choose to do um but it, of course isn't you know any decision about your body um especially related to pregnancy is so complicated and weighted and and needs so much thought and women think so much about these decisions and i wanted that to be to be represented by the kind of breadth of perspectives and i heard a few of the stories now first hand last night and, and they are very moving stories mm-hmm. and some of them very funny stories as yeah. well great very funny stories that's right some of our best humor is dark sadly well, <laughs> yes. it is yeah uh, we are you know we like our dark humor in this country and we it works do. for us but um you had that crowd there last night and the stories that were ready are there stories that in particular appeal to you or do the, does it shift does one appeal one day and another another day I know it's such a cliche, but like they're all my favourite. Um, and so, yes, every time I think of a story, a particular story, I go, oh, that one, that story, you know, that's been so affecting. Um, just thinking now, um, Kiana Sadler's story was um, really interesting to me because she described being 11 years old uh, in 1983. And her story is about being a little girl, just come into this awareness. She's in a swimming hall and as she walks out, having done her little bronze medallion challenge, she just sees all the pictures on the wall and they're all of boys all down through the years. And so she's coming to this awareness that actually her achievements, her body, not really as important in the world. And then um, she comes into the awareness of what's happening with 1983 and the Eighth Amendment. And so that was really interesting. I think it's really interesting and important to remember what happened in 1983 and that that's what we're trying to undo. Mm. Um, another one then um, that always comes to my mind is Eileen Flynn's. So Eileen Flynn is a, a traveller woman's rights activist yes. and she's an activist in the uh, pro-choice movement. And she made a speech um, on stage at the March for Choice in 2017. Time has no meaning to me anymore. Yeah. I think it was 2017. Yeah. And I asked her for it and um, she she gave it to me. And so to have her words in the book is very special to me. Yes. Um, she said one thing in the in the speech. Um, she said that her mother always had a saying: nobody knows the shoe is cutting her except the woman who's wearing it. And I just I thought that was a very very that simple, is, very profound thing to say about this movement. It really is. Um, it, it's a lovely phrase, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah, yeah. It is. And, but yeah, I don't like. I mean, how do you how do you uh, these things? Like, that that says to me that this has been something that has been known for a long generations and generations Absolutely. passed on and what it means is you know we've owned it we haven't we haven't broadcast it what we're doing mm-hmm. now is we're trying to actually as you say undo 1983 yeah and um and take the stigma out of it uh, drink the the drink the, the poison i mean you were driving up this road and you saw the the posters i'm I sure did. and it's so much worse here than it is in cork but it's going to get worse in yeah. cork yeah well there there's two primary schools uh, on within 500 meters of this door and those posters are everywhere yeah and i've had people say to me you know well, what do you say to your um yeah what do you say to your kids and you know i've spoken to my daughter my youngest daughter and said well look it's a it's a shock tactic they're using to say exactly. something that's actually it's actually it's factually inc- incorrect it's and yeah. if um and if you know if if mommy wants to mommy wants to get equal treatment as with 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 uh, with a doctor like daddy does daddy gets in and it's nobody else's business between him and his doctor i don't understand why it should be different for mommy and and and, and the doctor why she should have to ask someone standing outside the door now my 9 year old then kind of goes okay and drops it my yes. my 12 year old parses it and nuances it and mm. wants to and knows a good knows a good deal more but you know those conversations 
I'd have loved to avoid them if yeah. I could. But, it's uh, to have them. But you do have, but you, but it's, it's kind of good in a way that they're being had in some ways, even though, yeah. you know, it was cringing going into it. And mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of there. But, but what are you going to do? The posters are, are all yeah. over, they're wall well, to wall. I have to say that is the best explanation for a child that I have ever heard. And I was going to tell you about, you know, parents for choice. Yeah. They have some posts on their website that are really good how to talk to your child about abortion, yeah. which sounds ridiculous. Mm. But we do have to know because very shocking and unethical posters are up in front of primary mm. schools and they are great and helpful and lovely ways to do it. Mm. That's one of them. I just I, I want parents for choice to listen to this podcast now specifically. Um, and uh, yeah, to hear the way you, that that's just a beautiful way to explain mm-hmm. the situation to a child. And you you were saying it's a nuanced area, and that that came home to me this week. How nuanced it is in mm. that um, women and cancer treatment has come up during the week. And I myself was I was dealing with cancer, so the nature of cancer in this country. As a man with cancer, you spend a lot of time with women. Because the cancer clinics are full of women. Mm-hmm. The men are all dead. They don't make it. So the women are there. Wow. <laughs> but that's the truth. <laughs> that was the case. Oh, my that God. That is the truth. So it's it's mainly men. Women. Gi- men give up. <laughs> <laughs> so Women are strong. Yeah. But it, it is mainly women you're with all the time. And um, we've been going through this trip. And I meet the same women. Uh, appointment in, appointment out. And we, we have chats and we keep up to date. And I never knew that. I mean, I went and I went to the, the, the professor of college and I said, I want everything, throw the kitchen sink <laughs> at it, don't care, throw everything at it. And that was no problem. And he threw, as long as I would take it, he threw. Nice. But I'm sitting with all these women who have had extra questions yep. to answer. And extra tests. And extra, yeah, but before they, they can avail, uh, yeah. they can't say, look, throw everything at it. Yeah. He has to say, well, I have to ask you this question first yep. before I can throw everything at it so that's how nuanced yeah. it is and you know for me dealing with cancer it was about my kids at home sure and that's what it was about and I'm sure for women there yeah. are plenty of women in that situation where it has to be about for the kids at home yeah absolutely you know it can't be about are you are you Potential. six are you six weeks pregnant and yeah. you're about to start cancer treatment and suddenly somebody says, "Well, I'm afraid." You can't. And, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine. I would have just said to them, "Here, yeah, look." Yeah. Seriously, just absolutely pile it in. Yeah. Then you I mean you come into the area of like consent and how actually women's consent now is so nuanced. Our our, our ability to consent to medical procedures to say yes, throw the book at this, you know. Mm. Well, I'm sure. Is... I'm sure for and you know they they say. <laughs> There's conservative parts of the country, but I'm sure for, for people in conservative parts of the country, that's that's a very easy equation. I think for for mm-hmm. any man uh, looking at his wife in hospital and kids at home, and is his wife going to get treatment because potentially she might be pregnant, mm-hmm. and he's looking at the kids at home, going, "For God's sake, take care of my wife." Yeah, you know Th- that's that's so left out of the again the other side of the debate. You know the fact that over half of the women who choose to terminate a pregnancy are already mothers and they're making a decision for their kids yes. that they have at home, be it in hospital or for any other reason, for economic reasons, for whatever. The, that th- These women are making ethical, moral decisions for the children that they already have, you know, and it's, it's something that really everybody needs to remember. And for Ireland, you know, with our agricultural background, th- those decisions are decisions that men have made in, in relation to and I, I don't mean to say this, but in relation to their livestock, for years and years, for decades, they've made those decisions. There's no qualms. There's no, there's there's no questions about it. They, you know, in normal everyday life, they deal with this on a daily basis. Yeah. But there seems to be a block then when it comes to 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 people who can actually have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Who can actually say yes or no? I don't want to do this. Well, it's so funny because like. It, I, it, it does. This debate does make me feel like a, a breeding animal. Yeah. Um. And a lot of the ways in which people talk, like we say, if I get trolled on Twitter, but even looking at the pictures, like I am being seen as a breeding animal, uh, some a, a, a thing, a, a, a piece of livestock, a unit of livestock, whose job is to breed. Yeah. And that's that's terrifying. I have to be honest and say that. Like I can say a lot of wordy things about it, but at base, it's terrifying. Um. To be to be seen as an incubator. A vessel. Yeah. Even thinking about Miss Y, um, to be, to be forcibly incarcerated 
fed against your will to gestate a pregnancy that you wanted to terminate. It's, it, it's like something out of a science fiction film. Well, I mean, we did have that, that, that awful, awful situation where a woman was kept alive. Yeah. I mean, that's just... And it was heartbreaking for everybody yeah. involved, for the family, for yeah. the doctors. It was just... And I mean, it, it was that situation where you say, this is, this is an outrageous law. Yeah. It's an outrageous way to treat anybody. It, it was so... Um, how do you put it? Uh, handmaid's Tale. It, it yeah. really was yeah, so absolutely. Handmaid's Tale. That's what... And you know, I always come back to this when I'm looking at... And I, I don't want to be focusing on the anti-choice side... I want to focus on positives, and there's so many positives. Mm. Um, but the poster is that uh, the people on the anti-choice side use the woman is missing. Um, the body of the woman that surrounds the image that yep. they have is, the, is absent. Did you see? There's a campaign in uh, in Hollywood, um, and it, it, I think they call it the the, the headless women campaign. I did, and see it was that. quite funny yes. because it was basically just all of these billboards were like you so say you you might have Pierce Brosnan in the film, uh -huh. and he's flanked on either side by two boobs basically headless women yeah headless <laughs> women and then, so the women don't exist and he's there and it's Reese Myers and it's Tom Cruise or it's whatever yeah. and and in much the same way I know it's a huge thing but this is kind of the same idea it it's is. the same principle it all flows from patriarchal structures mm -hmm. it flows from how we we manage to make make Oh, it's not about inequality. It's actually just about our concern for the unborn. No, it's actually no. about patriarchal structures yeah. and, and making sure that they're just slightly less than. That's right. Slightly less than. Slightly yeah. less than human. Slightly yeah. less than a citizen. Mm. And that is the space that we currently occupy. Mm. And, uh, and it, again, I don't want to cut across. I know you're so much more uh, informed than me, but I do <laughs> want to put out the point that for me, it boils down to is is uh is the, does the UN say it's a human right? Is, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Well, there, then um, your opinion is your opinion is is your opinion. You're entitled to it, but I'm sorry. In the the UN and the European Court of Human Rights have spoken. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Are you looking forward to a big turnout for this referendum? I am. I want to. I, I just had a big conversation with my taxi driver coming over here about this, and he was like, "Oh, sure, that'll be no problem. Like, of course, it'll pass." And I said, "We cannot be complacent. Mm -hmm. We cannot be complacent. I, I'm not going to be optimistic about this. I'm going to be positive and hopeful. Um, but we have to fight to get people to the polling booths every day, every hour, until the votes are cast." But I have to say, there seems to be a tide. And I, I have to say, there does seem to be a tide and the 500k raised so quickly <sighs> and so many people turning out to canvas. That's the other big thing. Yeah. And I've seen it every, my friend is, is canvassing today. She rang me earlier on and she's out canvassing today. Um, and these are people who, who aren't looking for accolades. They're doing it very quietly right. by themselves. Yeah. Um, some of them are going out on their own and just knocking on doors and having chats with people. Well. If Martin does that in Ashburn, but that's just the, the, the size of the places for, for security or if you got an alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Casing the joint. I, I'm, I'm not great on doors. <laughs> Windows he gets in, though. He's only small. Oh, dear. I'm learning so much. But it's true. Um, there's an awful lot of people out on the canvas who are uncomfortable with socialising. Do you know, people who have never gone out on the canvas before are going out for this. Like, and, and that's really lovely. Um, even just to shoehorn loads of stuff about Cork into this podcast. Yeah, yeah. We have, I think it's over 10 now groups in the county and each one of them would have started with one or two people going, Jesus, I don't know if this is going to work. You know, a lot of hostility within a week. There is tons more support. They go out to the doors. Everyone's in favor of it. It's just been surprise after surprise. Um, well, I saw Gary Gannon was out during the week and I think they had. 30 people turned up to canvas. He was down in Drum Condra. He had a big, he had a big posse. You know, well, now Gary, he, Gary's kind of a handsome looking guy. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I'll have to Google him later. I'd, I'd, certainly, I'd certainly go and stand behind him for a while. And you know? did I see that Louise O'Reilly from Sinn Féin is going to go canvassing with Leo Varadkar? Oh my God. You know, I heard that during the week. That, so that's great. That is great. And I think it's brilliant. And, yeah. you know, we can... On issues, we can say, look, there is a right way, there is a wrong yes. way, or, you know, there is a right way, there is a compassionate way to do yes, this. Yes. You can absolutely. take the party out of it anyway. Yeah, we, can, we can take the party out. And that's a great message, actually, to the party members, to be like, we can put party political differences aside for this issue, because this issue affects us all. I like well, that. nobody is trying to enforce anything. All we're trying mm -hmm. to do is stop the enforcement of other people's wishes on women. 
Yeah, exactly. Again, so important to say that nobody is forcing anybody to terminate a pregnancy or, or to choose not to. You know, it's yeah. about decisions and making the right decision for yourself without interference. And, and we have to give, and I know and Martin's going to come for me after this podcast like <laughs> like the bad out of hell. But you have to remember only a few years ago, Leo Varad compared it to lads going to Las, Las Vegas or Amsterdam for a weekend. Yeah, That was his comparison. And now he's going to go out and canvas for it. Now, yeah. you can talk about that cynically as a political uh, or a Thing, it doesn't really matter because yeah. his whether you the individual doesn't take Leo out of it, he's the T shock, and that's important. Yeah, that's a figurehead that comes with that office has respect and has has power has authority. And what when he does that, even in any capacity, it makes a difference. Yeah, and we had our version of that in Cork again with Michal Mark. Yes, yeah. coming out, and again you can question his motives. Yeah, and we will, but. <laughs> I was very grateful. I was very grateful. Yeah. And I, I, I was publicly grateful and privately wrote him a letter as a constituent because it made a huge difference mm. that those those things are game changing. Mm. Um, a lot of Fianna Fáil people will have to think very hard now about their position. And, and, the, and the, po- the politicians tend to be behind the electorate anyway. The electorate yeah. usually get there first. So they're just they're scrambling to keep up. Michal Martin was one of the first out of the traps, which was actually, it was impressive for a man of uh, such a long political career and a conservative political career, um, a former health minister as well. Um, but what we're, what we're actually looking at now, and I've seen, you know, some, the Labour Party, for example, are postering, yes, posters. Some parties say, yeah. well, no, we won't, we'll leave it up to the individuals. We're going to have to just trust that, that the greater good will actually prevail. And I, I think, you know, yes. things like your book, you know, I know we're going to say it's sold out and stress it not, but it's important to get those stories out there. And yeah. uh, Tara spoke to us about breaking the stigma. Yeah. Jan mm-hmm. O'Sullivan spoke to us about breaking the stigma. Jan was attacked yesterday, as you, as you saw. Uh, I didn't maybe, see that. Well, she was attacked by uh, uh, Manja Gurk. Um, <laughs> And um, and he he basically challenged the fact that just Josephia Madigan was going to be at an event where Jan would be appearing, and that she was um thing. Now we published uh, Jan's um statement uh, on our website last yeah. night, um, and then we put it up on Twitter, and because Jan had kindly shared it with me, mm-hmm. and then the Irish Times actually pu- published a copy of it, well, a, wow. a abbreviated copy of it as well. Just because people are people aren't going to be ashamed away out of this. That's right. And that's, that's right. we're this this is we're like just because they're they're going to play dirty doesn't mean we're going to back down on this. No, and we're not going to play dirty either. We're just going to tell our stories. Mm. Like I meant to say to you earlier, there's it's it's hard. Like as Tara was saying, you know, when you tell your story, you leave yourself open to attack mm. by unethical people who are trying to oppress you and bully you. But when you tell your story, and there's like a hundred and fifty other women mm. telling their story as well, you kind of can't be shut up. Mm. And I was saying last night. Um, Everyone who tells their story gives the permission to someone else yeah. to come out and tell their story until actually people have to listen. Like well, there's... Ireland is a place where we've lived with toxic shame and we live mm-hmm. with shame in this country far, far more than in other countries. And when yeah. you've been away for a while, you realise how shamed we are in this country. Absolutely. And this is a chance to break that cycle of shame. This is a, a chance to look forward and not look back yeah. and say, we can have a better country because we are better than this. And we, we, we all know Irish we're better people than are this. Compassionate people, yeah, yes. yeah, we know this. And we, we, I mean, all of us have mothers, sisters, mm-hmm. daughters. We know the decisions that we're going to make in this referendum affect those around us very intimately. Yes. And we need to look at that and say, you know, bring it back to home. Don't look at it as, as othering or they. This is something that lives in your yeah. own house. You know someone. Yes. Like every one of us knows someone. Yeah, it lives in your own decision. house. So you have to make the decision on that basis. Yeah, I think that, especially with some of that, the horrible things uh, people imply about women um, it being, you know, not you can't trust them. And I hear some horrible things on the canvas from people who just haven't done the thinking. Mm. And then you say to people, do you know, look at the women in your life. Like, do you think about those women like that? Because yeah. every woman is a part of somebody's life, you know, and can we trust the women in our lives? And in that case, can we trust just women? Mm. You know, that actually we're, we're human. We mm. make we make decisions for the right reasons. The, the crazy situation where someone point, painted a scenario that someone said, oh, I'm pregnant and I oh, look, my due date clashes with um, with Martina's wedding. Oh, sure. That's inconvenient. Get mm-hmm. a grip, guys. Yeah. Get a grip. Exactly. Um, and I think, you know what else was, uh, you mentioned consent earlier and we talked about in terms of consent and we know we've been through the whole um, 
Paddy Jackson, yes. Stuart Alding, the the trial, the fallout from that, mm-hmm. and then the judge releasing the stuff two weeks later to show yes the uh, like the actuality. photoshopping of blood off of sheets, things that. But that, even if you take the personalities and and uh, take the names out of it, yeah, take, take yeah. the names out of it. In that situation, um, it shows that a woman, and we'll say who does get pregnant through an assault. Mm-hmm. The idea that she has to prove mm-hmm. rape. Yeah. I mean, that would have been the process yeah. was so you'd, she'd have had. There's no way. The, it, it's, it's just impossible. a practical And even if it was possible, it is to destroy you. Like, to but have even to go if, through that. If, if we will, if you, if you extrapolate it through, had the woman become pregnant, had an yeah. abortion, the trial is held, then the trial is over. The minute that trial is over, she's then actually liable in law. Yeah. Because she had an abortion. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and that's the crazy thing about this. That is, it's really, really crazy stuff. I mean, none of us want our, our wives or daughters facing jail Prosecution, time. Yeah. criminal records. Yeah. And I mean, that did happen. People can say, oh, it'll never happen. That's not a reason to keep a law or to keep a constitutional amendment because you might not get prosecuted if the law is there and it and it can lead to prosecution. That's not okay and it has to go. All it but takes is the right administration man, to exactly. start using it. Or, or the wrong administration. The wrong administration. And that woman in Belfast, that poor young woman who was mm. prosecuted and now has a criminal record, th- that, that's unthinkable. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, unthinkable. Oh God, yeah. There's another one. That yeah. is, and, I mean, when you think back, there are so many instances yeah. where we need to put these away and say, no, no, that's not going to happen that's again. That's not going to happen again. It's it's part of a wider movement, as you referenced, isn't mm. it? Like, it feels very timely, like with Me Too, yeah. um, the outcome of the Belfast trial where there was just this beautiful outpouring yeah. of support. Well, I've seen, I've seen in, I think I've seen this morning that both, yes, both players are leaving the, the club, rugby. which yeah. is, which is, you know, uh, damn so straight on where we were Two days ago, where we had Willie John McBride going on Sean O'Rourke saying, "Ah, oh, sure, lads, boys be boys," and put Jesus. them back in the, you know, uh, and it just shows you the disconnect from where the the, the movement comes. I keep going back to poor old Simon McGarr, must his head must be got spinning because I always bring it up, but he does talk about the fact that the demographics in this country are based on the the the, the power stands from thirty five year old to forty five year old, and there, um, that's where the, the biggest voting block is, and they tend to be more liberal in even if they're not economically uh so socially they can be conservatively economic e- and, <laughs> and liberally socially yes. and and where we have there is at least those things now are starting to come they're coming to fruition and that will actually nice. so he he will tell you we will say it's a movement he'll just say it's a simple matter of numbers but and again, <laughs> take the fun out of us he does yeah that's his job <laughs> again it's it's worth considering we have um parties who, who are center center right who describe themselves as socially liberal, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, economically co- or fiscally mm-hmm. conservative. Yeah. The the alternative to being socially liberal is being socially illiberal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when people say they're socially liberal, I'm afraid there isn't actually a choice. <laughs> you know, you are either going backwards or you are going forwards. Mm-hmm. If you want to be socially illiberal, do you want to take away the rights that we have yeah. already invested in people yeah, yeah. you know so there isn't a choice socially liberal everybody mm. is socially liberal or else you're not in you're aggressive you're aggressive yeah. and do we want a country where we're going back to yeah. where we were instead of moving forward out of that quagmire of hate yeah. and shame yeah. and disrespect and nobody no matter how aggressive no matter how nostalgic you are nobody anymore can look back at our history and say that was good no, what happened when and what happened the vulnerable was good. Well, we can't, and particularly in a, in a week like this where we were talking chum babies. Yeah. And we're looking at that and we're saying, oh my God, you know, find out. It was out not the who, product of a compassionate these nation. Are all people, please stop being dispassionate about them. In death, give them the recognition they never had in life. They never had. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the same for women in this. Women need recognition in this. They need to recognize that they are individuals mm-hmm. in their own right. Yeah. Absolutely individuals in their own yeah, right. Yeah, with the right to make the right decision for them. Yes. Yeah. Kathy, tell us where there's an army of people working with you on this. <laughs> I know is. this. And you're just uh, and you're very modest about this. You're the figurehead at the top of this table, but there are an army of people underneath who are helping you. And I mean, you yeah. don't even know where you're staying on a nightly basis. And I know this. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> That's right. Yeah, I didn't know where I was when I uh, walked out of the house I was staying in last night. I had to use Google Maps. But that's great. And that's the commitment you've put into this. You've put an awful lot of your own time and your own commitment into it. Um, where to next? Where is your next launch going to happen? So back in Cork, because obviously uh, Cork is brilliant. Um, we and have Cork, that's what road is that from Dublin? Every road. Every road <laughs> out of Dublin. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of tolls, Mark. <laughs> toll, on you mo- a toll on you emotionally, <laughs> toll on you financially. It's just... Yeah, no, don't come down. We don't like you down there. <laughs> so anyway... Um, there's going to be, so there was a Cork City launch on the 6th of April and that went really well. And there's going to be a launch in UCC as well. So that was really nice to approach UCC who, I mean, the students have taken a very strong pro-choice stance, but you still don't really know, you know, if the institution is going to be okay with hosting something like this, which is overtly raising money uh, for the campaign. But they were, the English department were straight away like, yes, we'd love to have this book. And so that launch is going to happen in UCC on the 19th of April, which is next Thursday, I okay. believe, at 5 p.m. And so it's all welcome. Uh, we'll have what we always have. There'll be a chat, there'll be readings. Um, people can buy the book and raise money for the campaign. And then after that, there's going to be, I can't remember the order, uh, there's going to be a Kilkenny launch, there's going to be a Galway launch, there's going to be a few others that I can't think of, and there's going to be um, a Belfast launch on the 8th of June as part of Belfast Book Festival. And that's kind of quite deliberately to show that the fight is not over. And that we're going to focus our attention straight away now onto other areas where people need support. And how do you manage to stay going, Kathy? Because I know it's fanatic at this stage. It was, it was so funny at the launch last night. Nearly everyone who came up to say hello to me said, are you very tired? And I was like, do I need to look in the mirror? Again? <laughs> Is my face okay? I was going to say it, but I... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> such a supportive atmosphere <laughs> but actually I am not tired and I said this in the in the speech I made last night because uh, when you think about the real women who are like today traveling um, to access health care that they need that they can't get in this country who are stigmatized and ashamed as you said and silenced have to keep it a secret and then the other women who can't travel so who are risking prosecution if they can if they have the wherewithal to access abortion medication and the other women who can't access abortion medication and are having to withstand pregnancies that they're not able for when i think of those women i'm filled with energy and i won't be tired oh, until great. we repeal the eighth amendment and uh, free them and bring our women home so i think that's great and i think i just i, I just hope everybody gets on board and, I hope, mm-hmm. and look mm-hmm. lads there's a part to be played for lads in here just have a vote yes you know so up off ours out and vote you know men voting is so important i hear people talking sometimes about how men are saying oh it's 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 a woman's issue it's not my right to vote but just to say anti-choice men are going to vote they're going so to vote in numbers they're yeah. going to vote in us a pro-choice men we need your vote you yeah. need to vote to cancel out those anti-choice votes we need you you have yeah. to vote you know, that, that's that's very true and you need to also um, we'll tweet out the links to together for yes to support Brilliant. the campaign we'll put the we'll, we'll even throw up the dates on, on the on the echo chamber pod.com um, but it is a movement but I do think you're right as well that when you move it beyond the the date uh, beyond the 25th yeah. it doesn't finish it doesn't finish no I, I, I agree with you there and you know what it's great to see such a bundle of energy and such positivity uh, uh it, you know provided as i said trump doesn't end us all in the next little <laughs> while Wait. Okay, i'm just going to remind people the book is called autonomy and the next launch is UCC. That's a place called Cork. It's somewhere <laughs> off down there. It's on lovely. The, on the 19th. So anybody who can get to it, get there as I said, a fiver for the book. And then you make a donation after that, which goes towards uh, the campaign. Thank you very much for coming in and seeing us, Cathy. I know you're rushing off now to, to, uh, to, to be interviewed by somebody much bigger than us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't take much. This is, yeah. this is the very bottom rung. The very bottom rung. the most important people who've ever interviewed me here in this room. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I gotta say, guys, I know we usually put out the shout out saying, you know, give us, give us a dig out, give us whatever, but whatever you can do, throw the money to, together for yes. Um, we'd really appreciate it. Any, anything you can do, dig deep. Um, we've got six weeks, well, five and a half weeks left now. Let's all get, let's all get behind this. Thanks so much.